Hello, cheap skaters. I'm Kath Armstrong, creator of the Cheap Skates Club, where our goal is to live life debt free, cashed up, and laughing. If you'd like to join the live chat tonight while we're going through our show, you need to be logged into your YouTube channel. Now, that's what um, YouTube calls an account or your Gmail account. Now, if you don't have either of those, you can leave a comment in the comments section below me and I'll do my best to answer them when I can. It is Tuesday the 6th of July 2021 and this is a YouTube premiere. Now, before we get started, just a little bit of housekeeping. If you could, please give us a thumbs up. It's underneath me there. And if you haven't already subscribed to our channel, just click the subscribe button. And then if you click the bell, you'll be notified every time we go live or we upload another video for you. It's just an easy way that you will always be able to stay in touch. Now, for tonight's show, my top 10 tips for saving money. One of the reasons we live the cheapskates way is so we don't need to worry about our finances. Now, of course, we, we have bills. We have the gas, the electricity, the rates and insurances and all that stuff that everybody else has. And a few weeks ago, someone asked why our budget is tight. Well, our budget is tight because we're on a limited income. We don't have unlimited money to spend we have expenses and we are also saving we are saving for our future retirement is still a few years off but it's getting closer and closer and when we retire we don't want to downgrade our lifestyle just because we retired but we don't want to work until we're 75 or 80 either until we die we want to be able to kick back and enjoy the fruits of our labours. So we have a tight budget that we stick to with a focus on saving. Now, if you struggle to save, there are a few things you can do that will make it simpler. Now, notice I said simpler, not easier. I don't think saving is ever truly easy, but it does become a habit and once it's a habit, then it does become a little bit easier. So with no more fuss, here are my top 10 tips for saving money this new financial year. Tip number one, baby steps. I suggest you find one saving tactic and focus on making it a habit. Once it's become a habit, then you can focus on a new saving habit. Saving money takes time. It's not something that can just be done in a hurry. It's something that is done bit by bit. So while you're saving, you still need to live, you still need to pay the bills, you still need to meet your financial obligations. Just be prepared for baby steps. Tip number two, and this is so easy, automate savings. Set up a savings account and a direct credit into that account each payday. This is such a simple thing to do. In this day and age, it's really easy. And you know what? If you're needing, you know, an easy way to pay your bills, most utility companies and like will happily set up a direct debit payment program for you. Um, don't let them set it up. Don't ever give random strangers um, control over your money or access to your bank accounts or your credit cards or your debit cards, even if they say it is limited. Just don't do it. But you can get the BPAY information or the banking information from them and set up your own direct debit system so that it works on your payday, goes out, you don't even miss it. Now, I set this up for all our regular bills. When the bill is due, it is automatically um, paid from the bill account by BPAY. Now, it takes about two minutes to set it up for each payment. But once it's set up, it's done. Then all you need to do is make sure um, 
the money is in the account on the due date. But if you have your automatic savings and transfers done, your bill paying is um, covered and it's easy. And if you work with your budget, it's really easy to do too. Tip number three, track your spending for a month. Now, we all know money can just vanish before we know it. So tracking makes you much more conscious of where it goes and what it goes on. Now, I've heard people say that it's far too difficult to track your spending. It takes too long. It's too complicated. They just get too confused. And perhaps it is for them. Poor dear souls. But you're not stupid. You're not lazy. You can do this. It's a matter of forming a new habit. And it's as simple as when you buy something, record the where, the how much, and the what for. And you've tracked your spending. There's, you know, there's apps you can use to do this. You can use a good old-fashioned pen and paper and a notebook. You could use the notes um, function on your phone. It doesn't matter how you do it. Just do it. It's not difficult. It doesn't take hours. It's not hard. And there is no excuse for not doing it other than sheer bone laziness. I'll be blunt. You can't do it. It's laziness. You know, people that say they don't have the time, well, you have the time to spend the money. You have the 30 seconds to track that spending. Excuses won't get you out of debt, folks. Tip number four, bit of a no-brainer, but spend less than you earn. No? If you spend less than you, um, than you earn, that you bring in, you'll actually have money left over that you can save. So there's nothing more to say on this one. Just spend less than you earn. It really is a no-brainer. Tip number five. This is one some people struggle with. Create a realistic spending plan. Be exact with your figures. You need to know exactly how much comes in and exactly how much must go out. Now, last week we talked about budget fatigue and how to beat it. An unrealistic budget is the fastest way I know of to create budget fatigue. It's it's you know, just mind-boggling how an unrealistic budget can overwhelm you and exhaust you. If you didn't watch last week's show and you're struggling with an unrealistic budget, when you finish tonight, um, take a few minutes to watch it. It's only a short show because I was away. Um, but it'll give you an understanding of what budget fatigue is and how you can overcome it. Tip number six, saving even $1 is worth it. You'll be surprised at just how quickly little amounts, small amounts add up. You know, a dollar on its own is just a dollar. I don't know what you can get for a dollar these days. Maybe a McDonald's ice cream, I don't know. But if you add another dollar, you've doubled your money. You've got $2. Now, saving isn't quite that quick. It would be nice, wouldn't it? It would be absolutely wonderful if we could double our money and our savings as quickly as that. But every dollar you save increases the value of your savings. It increases the amount that's in that account. It gets you closer to your goal. So get in the habit of saving. And once that habit's established, it's really easy to do. You don't even have to think about it. Now, right now, interest rates are you know, almost non-existent. Don't worry about that. We're not worrying about making money on our savings at the moment. We're worrying, concentrating on getting into the habit of saving saving those dollars and building up the total in your savings account. Tip number seven. This is one we've talked about before. The $100 24-hour rule. 
and it's pretty simple. If it costs more than $100, wait 24 hours to buy it because chances are you'll decide you don't really want it or you don't really need it or you don't really like it or you can't be bothered going back to get it, um, in which case you, you know, most likely didn't really want it or need it in the first place. If you think it won't be there tomorrow, ask the store to hold it for you. You only have to hold it for 24 hours. But don't, don't be conned into buying it with the, um, with the promise that you can return it for a, a refund. Because again, once you get home, you've got it. Can you really be bothered going back? Even if you change your mind, chances are the answer is no. And you just won't be bothered returning it and you'll be stuck with something that you don't really want or like or need. So just wait. It's only 24 hours. It's only one day. Nothing drastic is going to happen. Tip number eight, the 30-day rule. <laughs> Sorry, there are a few rules this week. But they're for a reason and they... Um, have purpose they're not just me making up rules so 30 day rule and that's for big ticket items and it's simply wait 30 days again you'll either change your mind or you'll find a better deal and this is a great rule that pays off over and over and over for example um, Hannah was looking for a new sound system for her car the one she had was as old as the car and it was getting a bit crackly. So Wayne had a look and he found a couple that would fit the spot and the one they ended up choosing was $569. So she decided to wait a couple of weeks for the end of financial year sales. And yes, came on sale, came down to $499. So off she went to get it and the day she bought it because she kept track of um, cheapest place to buy it and kept getting the notifications that store had an additional additional 25% off so she paid $375 and that was a discount of $174 worth the wait now of course if your fridge stops working and can't be fixed you'll need a fridge but you can still shop around you can look at scratch and dent stores um, you can look online you can even look on Marketplace and see if you can get one cheaper. And that's fine if you need to do that. But if you just decide you want a new TV, then waiting 30 days won't hurt and it could possibly save you a lot of money. Tip number nine. This is a really good one. Track your progress. It's really exciting to watch your savings grow. You don't need to be a bank account junkie. And, you know, checking them every morning and every night and at lunchtime giving them a quick squeeze. You don't need to do that. But checking your saving progress regularly is um, not only encouraging but very wise. It doesn't hurt to make sure that every deposit is accounted for and that there's no sneaky fees eating away at your savings. It also helps to keep um, an eye on your savings in case of fraudulent transactions. I've had a couple of experiences with that in the last 12 months. And tip number 10, talk about your money with your partner or your spouse. This is so important. Look, even if they're not interested, even if they trust you to do it all, you still need to um, talk to them about it and have regular conversations about your finances. Well, firstly, it's just common courtesy. Secondly, even if they just listen and then let you keep doing it, they'll, they'll be aware of what is happening with your finances, with your money. It's really important. Look, I will never forget um, a friend of my mother's whose husband passed away um, very suddenly. She had left everything, their entire married life, she had left everything to her husband. He would give her cash for the housekeeping each week and that was it. When he died suddenly, she didn't even have a bank account in her name. 
They didn't have a joint bank account. She had nothing. She was on his credit card so she could use them, but she didn't have access to their bank account. She didn't know how the bills were paid. She didn't know how much um, they had in the bank. She didn't know if they had anything in the bank. It was an absolute nightmare. And because she um, had never done banking, she didn't know how to bank. She'd never used an ATM, let alone F post through supermarkets or been into a bank. It was a nightmare. So have the conversation just so your spouse or partner knows at the very least which bank you use, what accounts you have, and how the regular bills are paid. Support each other, share ideas and, and um, suggestions and advice in financial choices. It's the only way to ensure you both have the same, um, the same financial goals without arguing and, and stress. I hope out of those top 10 tips, there's something to help you get started saving. If you're struggling, just get started. Remember the dollar? Add a dollar and you've doubled your money. No? How easy was that? It's it's pretty painless. If you keep adding a dollar, another two, we um, two weeks, you'll have doubled your money again. Woo! -hoo! Keep adding that dollar and in four weeks, you've doubled your money again. Now, that's pretty simplistic. I know that's pretty simplistic. But it's encouraging to see your savings account grow. It's it is really encouraging to see it growing, especially when it can be done quite painlessly. I was going to say painfully, not painfully, painlessly. Look, saving a dollar a week won't make you rich. It um, certainly won't make you rich in a hurry, but it adds up. It all adds up. And, of course, the earlier you start, the longer you have to save, and that helps too. Now, the last thing I wanted to talk about to, to say is saving needs to be just that, saving. You need a bank account for saving just as you do for your emergency fund. And no, having a mortgage redraw and being able to use that if you need to is not saving. It just means you'll be spending less on your mortgage. You're not saving, you're spending less on your mortgage. The money you didn't spend on that mortgage isn't saved. It's just not spent. You've just spent less on the mortgage, pretty much giving yourself a discount. It's just as buying on special on half price isn't saving. It is buying with a discount. Pure and simple. Remember, Money isn't saved until it is safely in the bank. Until then, it's just not spent. There is a difference between discounts and saving. So remember, put your savings in the bank, make it savings, and it will grow. But if you don't do that, it's just not spent money. Okay, short show this week. Thank you so much for joining me tonight. I hope you liked our show. Please give us a thumbs up if you haven't. It really helps us with our YouTube rankings. And if you know someone who might like the show or who might benefit from knowing about Cheapskates Club, please use the share button down the bottom there to send them a link. That's all it will do. We'll be send them a link to the show. We don't spam them. We don't send them anything else. They'll just get a link to our show. Okay. Have a great week, everyone, and happy cheap skating. I will be back, hopefully, live next week. I'll see you then. Good night.